Hi, welcome to Narwhal Labs. We're here today with this big slab of maple that we've divided into two because we have two Total Boat Ambassadors coming in to have their artistic way. First, we have Jess Crow coming all the way from Alaska. She's part of our Maker Poxy Artist Resin, and she's gonna come in and do a bunch of layers and paint and use her ocean wave technique and make this slab really awesome and unique the way that she does. And then we have Caleb Harris of You Can Make This Too. Caleb's coming in and he is a master with our thick set epoxy. He's gonna make us a river table and he's going to make us a creative metal base in our brand new metal shop. Both of these makers are gonna need slabs that are a little more prepared than they are right now. So we have a lot of work to do. We're gonna to have to flatten them. We should probably seal them. We're gonna to have to get the bark off and clean this all up and have them as ready as we can because they won't be here for long and we want them to concentrate on the epoxy and the legs and the art. So let's get started. what you guys have ready for me and what we're going to do with it. All right, we're ready. Okay, here we go. Might need your help. Oh, well, look, it's got a little island. It's a gorgeous piece, and if you've seen a lot of the ocean pieces, this maple makes a gorgeous coastline. It makes just a beautiful finish, and it looks like the sand and the waves and all the figure really comes out. And we're going to let you take us there, and... Uh, we definitely have a lot of work to do. We have four days here with Jess, and uh, so we're going to have to go layer by layer and um, watch it unfold. Check out both sides here. I mean, we did have one side set as top, but that doesn't mean we're stuck to it being the top. So on both sides, we have a lot of burl action, but on this side, the ambrosia is really coming through the maple a lot more, plus a lot more just color variation. I think I might like this side more just because it has a little more going on. Like some fiddle back action. It's a little more prominent. We're gonna do a deep pour. I think having this as the top is probably gonna work better just the way that the sides are sloped because we're gonna have less issues with air getting trapped and then bubbles coming out. And obviously with the deep pour, bubbles are a large concern because no one likes bubbles in the epoxy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just just very rough sketch how I think it'll look. And another thing I'm not so certain of, I loved this island about 10 minutes ago, and I've loved the idea of the island. He may or may not be, be going, so let's see. All right. This is where it's going to get cool, because we're going to burn this entire edge using a torch. Thing. The water is just going to be kissing that edge. Here's our little scribble drawing. We've got the slab here, and then that was where we were thinking about putting the island, but I'm not going to put the island anymore. And solidifying that I, I really like these warm turquoise colors instead of maybe a more Caribbean greenish. I want to stick with these blue colors. But if I didn't like that, it's very easy to just draw another one with the green colors and see if you didn't like that either. But highlighting the black, I think is gonna be best served by using these blues. So we're here with Caleb from You Can Make This yeah. Too, all the way from Mississippi. Yeah. And uh, we're so excited to have him because we have the other half of the slab that we started working on with Jess. And now we have Caleb here mm -hmm. to work his thick set magic, different epoxy, different style, same slab. So what are you up to here, Caleb? So it's early in the morning. We got the first pour done. The goal is hopefully at five eighths of an inch thick. This is thick enough that before we wrap up for the day, we can do the second lift. So that way tomorrow it can cure and give us time to then demold it the following day and start finishing it. The race is on. The race is on. All right. Thanks for coming. We're psyched to have you. And yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, let's do it. So while the epoxy is in there curing, we're going to start working on the base, but we need to do some uh, technical drawings first. This is the top. The rough concept for the base is something. Like that. Very elegant and simple. So to take it up a notch from an end view, it 
it's actually gonna look like this. So we have a lot of compound angles we're gonna be cutting on the steel. Now the steel saw we're using only cuts simple angles, not compound angles. So we're gonna make a wedge that we can use to cut the compound angles. So now we've got our block set here because the saw will only go this way, but to get the compound, we also need to twist it. So that block we made earlier, go right in here. We also had to shave this down a little bit. So it's a little bit narrower than the steel. So that way the saw will uh, actually clamp on the steel. I'm glad I took it down to 25 instead of 30. 30 would have had even less bite. So. No, it, it's hot right here. Yeah. So we'll have to finish that over here. But yeah, you know, we got the most of it. I think we are gonna hit this one before we clear, but I mean, probably get a good bit of the way. Probably enough that, that like those, we can just finish and not have to worry about marking everything. Okay, cool. So as we increase the angle to do some of the other pieces, things got a little weird. And by increasing the angle, the clamps were no longer hitting the metal. So we had to jig it up a few ways, which also means um, the saw itself is probably gonna start hitting our fixturing jig before we make the cut, kind of like it did on the other pieces. I don't think it's gonna make it quite as far, but we're gonna go ahead and cut, see how far we can make, because the more we can do with this, it'll get us a good baseline to then just finish a cut instead of having to fully freehand mark all these compound angles. There we go. Like these sections are awesome. I wish we had a lot more of those because that actually looks like, you know, like lava mm -hmm. jagging through right here. So these are really cool. So now we're gonna go ahead, now that we've got it burned, we have it somewhat quenched. All I did was just wipe it down with a cool rag in order to just kind of halt it a little bit. And then we're gonna get it into our mold. And once we have it into our mold, we're going to go ahead and uh, pour our first layer of epoxy. underneath the tent for about an hour. We're just trying to get it to cure a little bit faster. Next steps, I'm going to paint a whale on there. From now, I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. I'm using golden fluid acrylic. These are my favorites. They stay pretty well under the epoxy and they don't lose a lot of color. Little cups, paint brushes, and here we go.
Now that we have painted our whale layer, we're going to go ahead and add the first layer of waves and uh, kind of starting to wrap this up and finish it. So I've already got this mixed and now we are switching over to the make epoxy layers. I've added a little bit of tint to it just to give it a slight hue, but as you can see, not very much. For my white for the waves, I'm actually using the Total Boat White Pigment Dispersion. This one is pretty cool because you just straight add it to your resin and it gets those beautiful cells without having to do anything else. So it makes it really beginner friendly and advanced friendly. got all of the waves finished and everything came together beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit and then I will come back and bring it all the way up to level. So it's the next morning. Uh, last night we found this piece of poly, got it all cleaned off so that way we wouldn't drop melamine dust into the finish again. So time to take it off and make sure everything cured well last night. And it mostly did. Um, it is hard. I was talking about writing that line of thickness. You wanna get thick enough that it cures quickly but not go exo and not be so thin that it takes forever to cure and it looks like we just barely had a, a runaway exo reaction. Everything's fine. Um, it did sink a little bit, so we're gonna have to do a top coat, but um, so we're gonna need one more pour, but we didn't ruin anything. Now, we can tell that it just barely started to have a runaway, but didn't fully run away, because in this larger section here, it's kind of ripply, you can feel it. And then looking through, I can see all the light waves kind of really looks like an ocean on the bottom there as the curves are refracting the light. And then right over here in this little bay thing, it definitely like bubbled up and scooped down and everything. So this little spot here is the only place it kind of really started to run away, but that's, that's really small. We can sand that out once we top coat it, we'll be good. Had a few issues with all these crazy angles, but we finally have everything gr grind, grounded, grinded, ground down to where they need to be. Um, using the table as a reference, pulled some measurements, everything is where it needs to be. So we can tack this together, get the other leg, set it on top, tack it together, weld it all, and then do some more grinding, I guess. Gotta grind welds. Won't be as bad as grinding angles though. So let's get to it.
see how badly it stands. <laughs> All four feet on the ground. Oh, wait. Oh, not that one. Yeah. That's do a kickflip. Yeah, that's really not that's not as bad as I expected it to be for. Yeah, like I can probably grind that out of one of the tall legs pretty easy. That's what maybe an eighth. Yeah, it's not much. It's not a lot. We have yet another epoxy reveal. I don't know how many times we're gonna do that in this project. But yes, the tabletop epoxy has cured, filled in that little bit of sunkenness we had because I should have domed it just a little bit, but then it also did go a little exo on the big area. So everything worked out great. Next, we'll just be demolding this. We're gonna throw it on the CNC, do a very light skim pass, just remove a lot of this tabletop epoxy, and then um, square it up, sand, put some finish on it. Base is wrapped up, now we just need to put a finish so it doesn't start rusting or keep rusting. So what we're gonna do is a really fast finish. We're gonna hit, hit it with a torch to pull all the moisture out of the surface. We're gonna wipe paste wax on it so it just melts into it. And then when it dries, we have a very fast, light duty finish, perfect for a coffee table that isn't gonna be in the elements or have a whole lot of abrasion, rubbing, touching. So nothing's really gonna be wearing the finish down. So it's great for light duty purposes. So we sprayed on two coats of Total Boat Halcyon Siden to mute the finish after we sanded it. Those have both laid down and dried beautifully. The only thing left is attach these together. So you saw we drilled some holes, put in some quarter 20 inserts, and then bolted it together. And it's all done. Now one of the cool things I don't think we've mentioned before is this slab is actually part of a larger slab. The other end of which is over here that Jess Crow came and did a few weeks ago. And we're about to give her a call. She actually hasn't got to see this totally finished yet with the legs on it and everything. So we're gonna give her a call, let her see her finish table, see my finish table, and we're gonna chat about them. What's interesting is because I'm actually finally seeing it full on finished for the first time because oh, really? my trip was pretty short. Yeah, no, and we had to jam so much into it that it doesn't suck. <laughs> and it doesn't it's awesome what i was going for was um i had just gotten back from hawaii again mm -hmm. and i was thinking about all the the lava flows and all the this sounds a lot harsher but like the scorched earth kind of okay how beautiful it is when you've got the ocean um just cresting over that and new life right. forming and new you know new parts of the islands forming mm -hmm. so that's why we just toasted that outside edge ever so lightly and left the rest of the figure in the wood and just highlighted uh it with the waves and the the surf coming into that cove like i just started looking at this closely and i noticed the burn you did around the edge and i really dig the layers of epoxy i see like how the ocean the ocean only comes up part way and then the wood protrudes above it kind of like it's smashing into cliffs and stuff I, I would I would say mine feels very organic and flowy. Uh, even with those those uh, angles there on the legs, I still feel yeah. it has a very organic nature to it. So I'm really excited to see what you have done with your section of the slab. This lab. Okay, yeah. So let's move over to mine. Um, I took a very different but similar direction. We picked the same colors. Here's my slab. Hey. 
Yeah, so we j I really wanted to focus on highlighting the wood. That's kind of what I do. So for me, the epoxy was just to get us off to a rectangle because obviously this shape isn't gonna, you know, function very well as a table. And I really wanted to offset this also with a sense of motion and angle. So that all came into the base. So our focus was more on, you know, this rad, super angular base with all these different angles, which kind of gives you a sense of motion and movement. It does. Those legs are just wicked cool. I mean, I like how there's such a complement between angular geometry, but it is almost still organic. It's, it seems a little bit unnatural and not so defined in a good way, in a super good way. Combined it, it, exactly. with losing the figure of the wood. And since the, I, I really kind of like the stance since the wood over here, the slab is so much heavier and then it's like a yeah. lot lighter there and we get more into the epoxy. Um, it just feels organic, even though we have all these angles and the curves, I wasn't sure at first, with the you know the burl and this beautiful figure um i really wanted a piece where the base would be super interesting just to kind of bring the uh the craftsmanship into it you know just show off what what i can do some and they wanted me to break in the metal shop but also just highlight the wood and all the grain so i didn't know how the angles would tie into all the curves and organicness of it but it, it worked out better than better than i thought actually so i'm glad Glad you, you know, saw that connection as well. It's just absolutely fantastic. I don't feel like it is competing, but the legs are not competing with the top and the top is not competing with any other components that you did. Yep, yeah, and that's one of the reasons I went with a light finish on it too. Like we can still see the mill scale, but then all the grinds and, and everything we had to do, just try to leave it as, as raw and organic as possible. And it's I like your, your color choices. Thank, yeah, me too. It's very similar. We're like all blued out. But yeah, anyway, thanks for all the feedback, Jess. I really appreciate it. Again, great job on the table. Thanks for hopping on a call, taking a little pause from work, and hopefully we can meet up at one of these meetups before too long. It has been a fun and uh, challenging build in all areas, right? Like both of us coming from out of state, yeah. fitting these builds and these pores in here, showing our little you know, like our spin on how we do things. I learned a lot. I imagine that you probably have learned a lot as well. And it's, uh, as always, been an absolute pleasure hanging out there in Narwhal Labs as well as with Total Boat. So I'm, I'm glad we got to share this experience. Thanks, me too. All right, until next time, Jess. Till next time. Right, bye.